tonight to weigh in on the debate. Uh, we've got two guests. First, from Washington, D.C., is political operative John Pose. He's the founder and CEO of American Tomorrow Project and the former National Asian Engagement Director of the Republican National Convention. And then from Berkeley in California, we have Gabriel Young. He's the Secretary of the Filipino Young Professionals. And Gabriel is, if you haven't picked up, a Democrat. Uh, great to have you with us again, gentlemen. And then good day, Senor Lahat. Thanks for having us. Mm. Thanks so much for having us. We could just have them both on screen again. It's been a very long day. So first thing I want to say is thank you so much. You've been appearing on our shows throughout the whole day. And we thank you for your time and your insights through this, uh, this, this, this momentous uh, evening or morning, your time now. Um, the, I've read a lot of reviews on the debate. So it's been 12 hours, essentially. Um, most U.S. newspapers, news outlets are calling it for Kamala. They say that she won this debate clear clearly but you don't have to take my word for it i am going to show you someone who's uh the, the authoritative voice on this if i could just call up that graphic that we have mm. there we go <laughs> <laughs> guess who won the endorsement the much coveted endorsement of taylor swift well it was kamala harris so and I, that's important i mean we laugh about it but it's important because she has 283 million followers just on Instagram and she's just finished a wildly successful world tour as well um, of the you know broadly what did you guys think do you are you getting a better sense of whether their performances were enough to swing votes their way uh, let's start with uh, Gabriel <clears throat> yes definitely I believe that vice president Harris's performance tonight definitely swung some votes down her way. I have a feeling that a lot of people are still very skeptical in terms of if she's Biden 2.0 or if they're going back to her old track record of her being a prosecutor here in California or even if she does have a plan or a vision. I think it was very clear tonight that one of these two candidates had a plan and a vision for the future and that was vice president harris most importantly in her closing statement she always talked about never going back and also turning a new page forward as you already saw what a trump administration looks like although she was being criticized for why not do the policy she was suggesting while she's in office what kamala spun it as is similarly why didn't you do whatever you did when you were in office and so those arguments of going back into the past and then reviving the past rather than looking forward to the future is something that I feel inspired many and it's having many people starting to lean towards Kamala after this debate. What about you, John? What do you think? Uh, did, did, uh, did former President Trump convince any undecided voters? Uh, you know, absolutely. I think in the swing states where, where these battles are going to be going down to, um, and as a matter of fact, a lot of Filipino Americans are going to be in those areas that's going to be affected by by this you know conversation. Um, I do believe that he's expressed his message since day one, since he ran, you know, and uh, I think it's it's quite um, interesting for the media to call Kamala Harris's plan as successful already and ha how we how she's developed all these ideas when she really released these plans the day before the debate. She's been installed as the as the new nominee for the Democratic Party for president for over 50 days and she's been avoiding interviews and and spot up issues and, and talking to to the press about these policies that she's rolling out. But however, in the debate last night, she came out as somebody who was well prepared on these plans when they've only been released a day before. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to, to see that perspective when the president, former president, President Trump has showed his his policies and in, into GOP platforms, not Project 2025, but his own platform along with the GOP platform since day one. And so I think, of course, Vice President Kamala Harris had a lot to show for in her in her debate last night in terms of explaining to the American people her policies and her plans. But it's just hard to believe that you can just say it's a new way forward um, when we are living in this current present and all of these ideas and policies that she's thinking and, and proposing has resulted in these economical uh, stri strenuous times for our uh, Filipino American people and our American people across the country. So that is the 
the message that I hope that the folks at home got to really analyze and really see is what is her plan? Um, is this, you know, something that is deceptive that just been, you know, rehearsed over the seven days that she was holding in her hotel room prepping for the debate with the Obama advisors and, and Hollywood folks that really rehearsed this fantastic, you know, candor and speech when it comes to her talking points. So I think she really won the soundbite vote and, and making sure that they'll be able to use that in future uh, ads down the road. But in terms of authenticity, I think President Trump has, has shown who he is and showed his still same personality of being um, aggressive and in, in towards uh, making America great again. It seems that uh, this performance was able to convince you somehow uh, to listen to Vice President Kamala Harris. Um, and and that, you're right, that has been the criticism against her. Uh, that And Trump even uh, said that you have no policy, uh, you're the same as uh, Joe Biden, whatever his pres presidency is, that is you. Uh, do you think she was able to define herself apart from the Biden administration clearly and do you think that uh, former President Donald Trump was caught off guard? He seemed irate the whole time. He was put on the defensive. Uh, very, very different position compared to the Atlanta debate where he was uh, so confident uh, taking jabs at the, the uh, pres President Biden. Um, yeah, I think, you know, uh, Vice President Harris, you know, really was very rehearsed and uh, it's a good scripted speech and and it just showed what she's been since she's been installed. It seems like it's just been a script the whole time around. Right. And these are policies that are coming from the Biden administration or is it Obama or what's actually her policies. Right. And so I think she still has in these next 53 plus days to really keep defining herself to the American people um, and, and really show her authenticity, which, to be honest, it hasn't really been shown. And, you know, um, President Trump, I, he was a little bit more defensive last night, of course. And as you can see, you've got a younger opponent compared to President Biden. But, you know, the story still stays the same of him trying to uh, get with them in, in terms of um, attacking their policies and how it's been a detriment to uh the American uh, people. So I think that in terms, yes, you can see that he was livelier tonight. Um, and I can see that in terms of the Republican policies that he was pushing for, he was a lot more aggressive in that tone. Um, so I think to his, to the base and to the supporters, that shows a very strong President Trump that can go against anybody. Okay, uh, Gabriel, I, I want to ask you this question first. We all know that the U.S. uses an electoral college system, meaning popular votes, unfortunately, do not count. Now, um, we're talking about just a few swing states here. Crucial vote, a narrow margin. Some are calling it razor thin, right? Um, what key issues uh, have you guys figured out when it comes to uh, these swing states and the issues they want to hear about, that they want to hear clear plans about? And do you think that was addressed in the debate tonight? I believe the swing states want to hear a lot about immigration, especially national slash homeland security, and also the economy. So on the immigration front, <laughs> President Trump's policy proposal, as bare as it was, was to deport 10 or to 11 million people in the United States, which, as a part of that, I should mention, a lot of Filipino Americans in the United States are also a part of that undocumented population. And so as wanting to deport that 10 through 11 million, he talked about using local law enforcement, using the military, but when pressed upon going door to door, he couldn't answer that question. And so what that really shows us similar to his response to the healthcare side of things is President Trump has concepts of a plan, but because he's not president, he doesn't have a plan. And on the flip side of things, Vice President Harris was put in charge of the Biden-Harris administration's plan to create a response to the border. And what we saw in the border bill that was introduced in Congress, as Harris pointed out, is that Donald Trump called up his Republican members uh, within Congress to kill the bill, despite the bill being a bipartisan effort, both Democrat and Republican, to support it. That would have expanded border patrol, but also redefined asylum, as you see now. What's also real important to know is that even though the Biden administration right now, they did not change the policy prior, um, prior to Trump, but rather they extended it and they expanded upon it to make it stricter so oh, they can find out better ways forward for immigration. And so that as a, its own compromise 
Vice President Harris is taking down, but also re-upping the fact that Donald Trump runs when he creates a problem for him to run on. Whereas Vice President Harris is there to answer the problem and the solution when it's given. Another thing, on the economy, Vice President Harris, although, as John mentioned, did just recently release these plans, these plans do take time, especially that she wasn't the candidate at the time. But her plan is actually verified by Wharton, um, University of Pennsylvania, Wharton School of Business, which Trump got wrong, School of Finance professors. And there are even tweets from Wharton School of Business professors saying that none of them reviewed Trump's plan and policy. Like, But he lied on national television saying that they did. And so this opportunity economy that Vice President Harris is talking about with a $6,000 tax benefit, with a 12500 small business uh um, small business startup grants and also much more such as um, buying homes i don't think we realize this but with homes being assets in the united states it is a carry-on of generational wealth and so these very clear plans albeit released just <coughs> recently um being released the day or two before the debate provided vice president harris the opportunity to share them on a national stage and explicitly state that she's not joe biden that she's not donald trump that she is her own unique person that has her own unique plans biden didn't mention any of these policies back in the last debate so it's very clear that vice president harris has found a way to differentiate herself right. from mm. the prior president right. well well immigration the economy abortion you're right that these are the issues that matter to swing state voters but let me put it this way um, what did you guys not hear that you were hoping the candidates would touch on, especially from your lens as Filipino Americans? John, let me start with you. Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the head. I think I'd love to hear more on terms of the, uh, you know, vice president's clear policies and how she differentiates herself from her boss. You know, that's the problem in this race is, you know, she can only run so far away from Joe Biden until she has to be re returned back into, you know, being tagged into it because she can't run away from it. You know, she's had a, a clear honeymoon bump since she's been installed um, to be the replacement of the of President Biden. But she hasn't been clear about these policies. And I mean, come on, in, in Washington, D.C., you can release policies, to, you know, options in, in two or three days. And if you've got a presidential staff that's working around the clock and it takes you one day before the debate, it seems some, a little bit more deceptive uh, to the American people. Um, in terms of the economy and in terms of um, immigration, as you can see, these are still the number one and two issues that's really uh, wrangling our, our, our folks here in the United States. And, um, and it's clear post debate that the, the folks still saw Donald Trump as a strong uh, person when it comes to the economy and into the case of the immigration. Um, in terms of immigration in these swing states, these are a, a key issue, especially to our Filipino Americans there too, right? Especially the folks that um, came in and, and did everything legally to come to the United States. Um, unlike from folks in the southern border that uh, crosses over, uh, they tend to just walk, you know, we had to come to the United States. We had to get some sort of visas. And then for us to extend that and make the the the, the decision to stay longer. But in, in this case, you know, like we've got folks, Filipino Americans that share the sentiments of, man, it's a slap to the face to our uh, community that does everything legally, waited for the proper right. legal years to, to become a citizen. Right. And now to see that their benefits and, and some of the health benefits that they're seeing coming are give, being given and displaced to the illegal immigrants. So that is a very, very important right. issue to our folks that's in the border and especially um, the economy as well. You know, right. they're working more, saving less. Budgets are stretching thin. You know, they have to decide, you know, $1,000 doesn't go far anymore. And they have to really decide between their family members and, and investments right. and, and the future. And then what we also have to remember is majority of these Filipinos still send money back home to the right. Philippines mm. um, and to support their families. Mm. So those are really the issues that our, our Filipino Americans are feeling. And you can tell that um, there's been a shift in, in terms of um, the movement right. when it comes to that. And so right. hopefully it gives a, a strong um, movement to come right. into the election. Uh, I'm going to have to apologize to Gabe because we've clearly run out of time for a rebuttal, but we will have you guys on another time. Uh, this is still, it's still about two months away. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for talking to us. It's been a very long 24 hours for you. That was Phil M. Community leaders John Jose and Gabriel Young. We appreciate your time.